Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about ceramic beads and some considerations uh, for making them. So first we're going to talk about the stages of clay. This is important for you to know because you do different parts of the process at different stages. Plastic is when your clay is really fresh and easy to form. So when you grab it out of the bag and it's super soft, that is when it's plastic. So you start with forming your bead. Let's say I wanted to do a pendant of some sort. So I want something that will hang down. I'm gonna kind of flatten it a little bit. There you go. I did all of the forming basic shapes while it's plastic. If you look really closely, there are some little cracks. There are some details that I'm gonna to have to work on in the next stage. Okay, other things you can do in the plastic stage are stamping. So what that looks like is we have a lot of different stamps that people have made in the past. So I could stamp these into my clay to make patterns. We also have texture plates. So things like this, where you could get a really cool all over texture. So typically you do this during the plastic stage as well. So if I put this down, kind of press down a little bit, pull it back up, all of a sudden I have a really cool stamp. In this case, you can see I have this mark. I probably would kind of reform this and then I would do it again so it's a little bit neater. You also want to start the holes during this plastic stage. So let's say I liked how this looked and I want it to be a bead that would hang like this. I can take my needle tool. I can start to make that hole. Notice I'm not right next to the edge. You don't want to make it so that you kind of break your bead. You might notice I'm also kind of wiggling it. In order for your beads to be able to hang in the kiln when they are firing with glaze, you need to have the hole be big enough. If you make a tiny hole and then the clay shrinks, you will not be able to hang it from the bead tree that we have. Okay, so I went from both sides, wiggled, and now I've got a nice big hole for my bead. Okay, so that's the plastic stage. The leather hard stage, you can do other types of detail work. So I have this piece, this slab. Um, I made this by using a rolling pin and just rolling it to the thickness I was going for. And now I can take that bead in my hands that I've been messing with and it's more leather hard and I can start to do two things. One, I can carve into it to make some of my own patterns and two, I can do craftsmanship work to clean it up. Um, I'd forgot to put a hole during or before so I'm gonna do that now just so you can kind of see. It's a little harder at the leather hard stage. It's not impossible though. Once again, going from both sides so that I get it to be larger. All right, so when we talk about doing, let's start with the carving. Typically, you wanna use something like a loop tool or anything that's a little thicker, like a pencil. If you just sketch something with your needle tool on the surface, right, it creates all of these sharp little burrs, these little clumps, and those do not fire well. So in this case, if I wanted to do something more detailed and kind of draw, I would use a pencil that's been sharpened instead. Or you can think about something that's a little thicker and kind of make your marks to kind of add some visual interest, right? The other tool that I mentioned, that loop tool, this is great if you wanna make bigger indentations or details, okay? So you can really start to kind of get creative with what you do on the surface to kind of make your beads more interesting. All right, as far as craftsmanship goes, we just did some carving, craftsmanship. The hole is a place where typically there's a lot of these little burrs that you have to kind of clean up. So one thing you can do is just use your hand and work on smoothing. Another thing you can do is you can go and use your sponge with a little bit of water. And so adding that water to the surface makes it so then you can use your finger to smooth so that you don't create a bead that's really sharp. Now, if I put a lot of water over my texture, I might start to lose it. So you do have to be cautious how much water you use as you're cleaning up your bead. Craftsmanship's really important, done during the leather hard stage. All right, the last stage, bone dry. This is when all of the water has left your beads. So when you're done with them, you let them dry out completely and then I fire. They're very fragile at that stage. So I don't have an example here, but bone dry, they start to look more whitish. Um, not this white, this has been fired already. Uh, but once they become bone dry, you can't really work on them. So if you're working on beads from period to period, you need to keep them wrapped in plastic. All right, let's move on to our firing in the kiln process. If you've never worked with clay before, once your clay becomes bone dry, has no water in it, then it goes into the bisque firing. 
okay? At that point, it becomes bisquare, which is what this stamp is at this point. So bisquare is more like a stone. It cannot turn back into clay again. And this is the stage when you would start glazing your pieces. Um, for glazes, we have a ton of different colors. So that is something that we will actually come down to the ceramics room uh, so that you'll have access to those to kind of figure out what you want to do in the future. But once it becomes bisque, you put glaze on it. The big thing you need to know is that you never want to put glaze in your hole or too close to it because the hole, well, glaze is liquid glass. And if you put it in, it'll fill it up and then you might lose your bead. Okay, everywhere else you can glaze. If you do a bead that's more like this, uh, like a pendant, you don't need to glaze the back. And so that way when it fires in the shelf, it can kind of sit like this, okay? Bisquare, first firing, you glaze your pieces, and then it goes into our second firing in the kiln, the glaze firing. All right, other considerations you wanna make when you are working with beads. Um, and I brought some examples to show you. You really wanna think through the design of what you're creating before you create the bead. So for example, I have some earrings that I brought here. So each of these is a different style of earring. And if you look, I've really been thoughtful about where the holes need to be in the design. So for instance, this one, I have two holes going through it this way. That helps give me the space to do something special on the inside. This one has one hole going down the center. So then I can kind of do this hanging mechanism this one I want to hang to the side, nice big hole so the wire will fit in it, okay? You have to think about whether cord is gonna go through it or chain or wire so that you can best come up with the size of the hole. So this necklace has beads where there is cord running through it. If the holes are too small, then you cannot fit the bead through. So you really have to be mindful of how the whole design works. And if you look at this pendant down at the bottom, I have two holes in it because I wanted it to hang on the side and then have the cord come up in between. Okay, so planning the design with wire, cord, think about where the holes are, think about the shape of them. And that's kind of what I talk about in the next one, the size, the shape, and the direction of the hole to support your idea. Uh, one more example I'll show you, this is not clay, but it kind of gives you an idea. This was a large bead with a hole running through it, but I wanted to use it differently, so I created a hole down the side so that it now becomes more of a vertical or a horizontal uh, item. All right, last thing, we fire with a bead tree. So either it's a piece of wire like this that your bead has to hang on during the glazing process, or as I mentioned before, you have to leave the back completely clean. So you need to be mindful of that as you're creating your piece. And then we already talked about craftsmanship, really important with beads. You don't want something that's going to be uncomfortable, catch on your clothes or look messy when you're done. And then also weight. If I'm making earrings and I make something out of a ton of clay and then I try and hang it from my ear, that'll be really uncomfortable. So you have to think about the weight and the thickness of your clay. Um, thickness wise, also if you make something that's super thin, that would be very fragile, and so you'd have to be cautious as you're working, depending on what you're doing moving forward. If it's a bracelet, it might be too fragile to be uh, keepable. All right, so those are some tips on making ceramic beads. I hope this was helpful, and good luck.